the best investment that you can make as soon as possible that is historically proven to work is this index funds buy an s p 500 low cost index fund why do billionaires throw their money into hedge funds funds are the most popular way to invest in financial markets but that has not always been the case it's a direct consequence of the work of two nobel prize laureates harry markowitz and james tobin let me tell you what they did and why they made funds so popular So we're right in the middle of discussing Markowitz mean variance analysis. And in the last video, we looked at two risky assets. But of course, in the world, there are a lot more assets than twos. But let's see what happens if we had more assets. I will show you the same analysis for five risky stocks. So here I have the return volatility profile of five different stocks. And on the y-axis, you see the volatility of the stock. And on the x-axis, you see the net return. And the net return is just defined as the gross return minus ones. But with those five stocks, I now build portfolios. So in this diagram, I just randomly made 10,000 portfolios out of those five stocks. And every single data point is one possible portfolio. So for instance, this data point could be a portfolio 20% stock one, 20% stock two, 20% stock three, 20% stock four, and 20% stock five. And this portfolio has a certain return and volatility associated with it. In this case, we have a return, a net return of, I don't know, about 0.15 and a volatility of about 0.18. And this volatility of the portfolio depends on the individual volatilities of the stocks and the correlations of the stocks. And what do you see with this diagram? You see, that it has a similar shape to what we did with two risky assets, right? If you look at the upper bound, the efficient frontier, it also has this curvy shape, right? And the lesson I want you to take away from this is that with five stocks, really nothing changes. Look at the diagram that we had with two stocks. It had this characteristic shape, and you see with five stocks, the characteristic shape does not change. In other words, with five stocks, everything works at just as with two stocks. We have portfolios which are obviously stupid and we have the portfolios on the efficient frontier which you can invest in. And you choose your portfolio on the efficient frontier depending on your level of risk aversion. So really nothing new here. The new thing now comes when we add another asset, a riskless asset. Let's dive into that. So this is the portfolios of the five stocks I just showed you. I just changed the axis dimensions. And now let's add a riskless asset. In other words, an asset which has zero volatility. That could be, for instance, a US government bond. Most of the time we assume that the US government is so rich, it will never fail to repay their debt. And let's say that the US government bond has a net return of 6%. In other words, in our mean volatility diagram, it's here. And now see what happens when we form portfolios between the stocks and the riskless bond. Let's say we choose this portfolio. This is once again, another particular combination of the five assets. It could be 20% of stock one, 40% of stock two, and so on. And now let's say we wanna invest 50% of our money in that stock portfolio and 50% of our money in the bond. What does that mean for our overall position? Well, our overall position has half the volatility of the stock portfolio. Why? Because we only invest half of our money in the stocks, which has the volatility, but the other half is invested in the bond, which has zero volatility. So the overall volatility of the position is exactly half. As the stocks, stock portfolio has a volatility of about 0.16, our overall position has a volatility of 0.08, so about here. And the return is also exactly the average between the stock portfolio and our riskless bond. In other words, the stock portfolio has 12.5%, the bond has 6%, so it's roughly at 9%. This means here's our 50-50 position. So 50% the bond and 50% the stock portfolio. And in fact, the line connecting the bond and the stock portfolio shows us all risk return profiles we can achieve by mixing the stock portfolio and the bond. So here you have 80% the bond and 20% the stock portfolio. And here you have 20% the bond and 80% the stock portfolio. So the line connecting the bond and the portfolio gives us all possible return volatility combinations we can achieve by mixing the bond and that particular portfolio. 
So what does that mean? When we only have the risky acids, all return volatility combinations that we can achieve are given by the points. It's this area. But now, as we also have our riskless acid, we can achieve a lot more return volatility combinations. Namely, all combinations where we can draw a line between the riskless bond and the portfolio. So in other words, what we can achieve now is about this. So these are the positions we can achieve now. And that is a lot more. So let's look in detail at those positions. Let's say I want, I want to choose, I choose a position here. Is that a good idea? No, because I can achieve a position with the same volatility, but more return. And the same is the same holds true for this position here. Well, I can achieve a position with the same volatility, but a higher return. And I think you see where I'm going here. There's once again an efficient frontier. There's once again portfolios which dominate other portfolios and there are portfolios which are obviously stupid. And I think you see it now. The efficient frontier is given by these portfolios, by this line. Let's look more closely at that line. That line I've just drawn you, that line that includes all the efficient portfolios is this one. It's the combination of this portfolio of stocks and the riskless bond. And this portfolio is thus very, very special. It's called the tangency portfolio. And this line is now the new efficient frontier. So our efficient frontier has changed a lot. Let me remember you, the old efficient frontier was this line, right? The new efficient frontier is the blue mark line. And remember what we said about the efficient frontier, that's the portfolios the investors are looking at. And where you are at the efficient frontier, whether you invest here or here, well, that depends on your level of risk aversion. So think about this. This analysis is kind of magic because what does it tell us? It tells us that the investment decision is actually very simple. We only need to consider two things. We need to consider the bond and the tangency portfolio. And our only decision is how much of our money we allocate to the bond and how much to the tangency portfolio. So we, if we have $100 to invest, our only decision is how much money do we put in the bond? Is it 20, 30, 40, $50? And how much do we do, do we put in the tangency portfolio? And this is exactly where funds come in. Let me tell you what a fund is. So on the stock market, there are a thousand of different stocks. I will plot them as boxes here. And if you want to form a portfolio of those stocks, this can be very expensive. Why? Because every stock has a price tag and some stocks cost over a thousand euros. So if you want to buy the 500 largest companies in America, you need to invest $500,000. So that's kind of a lot. So now fund managers come in and what a fund manager does A fund manager takes all of those individual stocks and puts them into a fund. In other words, puts them into a single financial product. And now he sells that single financial product to you, the investor. And you can buy a slice of that fund. So what does it mean if you buy a slice of the fund? Let's say the fund has the 500 largest companies in America and you buy 1% of that fund. That means you own 1% of the fund and the fund owns one share each. So you own 1% of every single share. So this gives you the possibility to not buy the entire share, but only fractions of shares. In other words, you don't buy one Apple stock, you buy 1% of an Apple stock. And this of course is a lot cheaper for you. So funds give you the opportunity to invest in portfolios without spending that huge amount of money. And there are different types of funds, mutual funds, exchange share funds. I'll go over them in the next video. So wrapping this up, what have we learned? So we have learned that there's immense gains from forming portfolios of risky assets. And if we add a riskless asset, 
a kind of magic thing happens. There's only one combination of risky assets that we need to care about. It's the tangency portfolio. And so our invest investment decision, if there's a riskless asset and risky assets out there, which is a kind of solid assumption, is finding the tangency portfolio and then deciding how much money to put into the riskless asset and how much money to put into the tangency portfolio. And this is also known as Tobin's Mutual Fund Theory. After the Nobel Prize winner, James Tobin. This says, when investing, we only need one fund and one riskless bond and one riskless asset, and that will satisfy everybody. And how much money you put in the fund and in the riskless bond, that's a decision, and that depends on your level of risk aversion. So I've told you what the riskless asset could be, a US government bond. The central question now is, what is the tangency portfolio? And you need to give me a couple of videos to answer that question, but we're going to get to the bottom of that.